Okay, so I'm going to talk about manure pond liner case studies and give you a little bit of background. This picture ought to give you a pretty good idea of what I'm referring to. So we've got a rather uh, much longer and, and more narrow lagoon here, um, and you'll see the pickup truck and then a, an individual standing there on a concrete runway in the middle of it. Then you see a curb and then the attachment framework for the synthetic liner and then the liner going up the sides of that lagoon. So kind of keep that as a visual in your mind as I go through the presentation today. Uh, a little bit of background, particularly as it relates to Washington State. There's been many questions in recent years as to the integrity of manure ponds, um, particularly from the regulatory community, but also from environmental groups. And there's been interest in requiring that all manure ponds be lined. Um, not just with clay, but also with these synthetic liners. So that's a big part of the, the context of doing these case studies. Um, the environmental agencies that we worked with in the region, the EPA in particular, last fall were interested in, well, if there was a requirement to put in these synthetic liners, what extra management might be required uh, if these ponds were lined, particularly as it related to handling of um, manure solids in the manure. Again, a little more background. Um, what you're going to see from these case studies is reflective of regional environmental emphases, uh, not necessarily what's happening nationwide. But uh, the nation is, I think, got a, a pretty keen eye on what's going on here in the West. Um, and I would also like to indicate there's likely an economy of scale is represented in the case studies that will be presented because they are from larger dairies. Um, the liners at these particular dairies were used because they were either cost effective for them and their location, they were required because they had very sandy soils in their location, and as a result, they, um, this was basically the solution that was recommended by the local conservation district, or they were chosen as an alternative to clay uh, by the producer. Um, in general, the eastern part of our state is rather arid, uh, low rainfall region, um, so under the 10 inches of rainfall, so give you some context there. So the objective uh, of this, and I actually um, created this PowerPoint originally for a, an EPA regional meeting last September of 2015, was to create awareness of the cost and the system requirements in regards to solids management as well as implementing these synthetic liners. And I will make a disclaimer that while I'm going to share some pictures that speak about specific equipment, it doesn't constitute an endorsement of any particular source of equipment, it's just the ones that are currently being used in our area. So with regard to liquid solid separation, uh, this is an example of the type of equipment that is common in, here in the Northwest. We have these uh, liquid solid separator systems that basically it's a, a cylinder um, with screens on the inside. And, um, and so what happens is the, it works much like a colander, uh, like you would with um, straining water from spaghetti. So the way these things work is that the, um, they can put different size screens inside. And they can, uh, if they put them in series like this, you can continually pull out smaller and smaller size particles. Uh, the second system, which we'll get referred to today, is called a BioLink system. And basically what it is is it's um, an engineer system to help settle out very small particles um, and get some of the the solids which will uh, come out, drop out by gravity. So what happens is there's action that occurs within these towers that allows the, the fine particles to uh, gravitate towards the bottom of the tank and then a very sludgy materials withdrawn out of the bottom of the tank. So again, they're just trying to remove more and more solids which, with each one of these technologies. And the last technology that will get referred to today is the centrifuge. Uh, to give you an idea of size, um, this is about two foot in diameter by about maybe eight feet long. And inside of here is a uh, centrifuge cylinder. So essentially what it's doing is it's spinning the water to the outside. Uh, the very fine particle manure um, goes out as a solid material. And then the refined liquid is, then goes out for um, lagoon storage. So this particular picture shows um, material that's come out of three different parts of the system. The pile that's very most uh, close to you at the front of the picture is the very fine solids that come out after centrifugation. The middle pile 
is the set of piles that's related to a set of screens that were of a smaller particle size, uh, uh, smaller holes that pull out smaller particles out of the manure solids. And then the far pile on the very right-hand pen of the picture is the very largest particles that have been pulled out by the liquid solid separation system. So at this particular operation, they were pulling out three piles of solid, uh, solids as well as uh, sludge through the uh, biolink system. Okay, now that you've got a bit of a visual there to keep in context what I'm going to talk about on these different dairies. So the first dairy, case study one, is 1,500 milking cows. They use um, the manure solids as a bedding, so many of those um, piles that you would see there as particles would be, they would subsequently use those for bedding in their barns. Uh, their parlor waste was handled uh, such that they separated the solids, and they've been doing that since about 1990, so the last 25 years. And manure from the parlor goes over this liquid solid, se solid separation equipment, then to a concrete lined settling basin prior to going on to the lagoon. Um, the manure from the barns, um, in contrast to the parlor, is vacuumed with a vacuum truck, and it's either transported to the fields during times of the year when they can directly move it to the fields, or it's transported to the lagoon. Approximately two years ago, they decided to retrofit one lagoon. Um, they installed a concrete bottom in it, and then they put in the 60 mil poly-lined banks, uh, pretty much similar to that very first picture I showed you today, so that um, you have about 20 foot across the bottom, of concrete, and then you've got two sides which are sloped, and each one of those is about 70 feet, and then the length of that uh, particular lagoon at this dairy is about 300 feet in length. They uh, chose to use floating pumps to pump manure and avoid any disturbance to the liners. Um, with regard to some cost and considerations, um, they had they obviously had to do some engineering, some dirt work, uh, put the liners in, and they had the concrete. They actually um, ended up working on a total of four lagoons over the period of time, including those most recently. Total about 12 acre feet or 11 million gallons, again, giving you some idea of the capacity. And the money spent uh, for this retrofit was in the neighborhood of about $500,000. So that came out to about $333 per cow for investment. Case study two, um, this dairy had uh, uh, more cows in case study one. They had 6,000 cows, milking cows. They had a, a flush system versus the um, vacuum system. Um, they did have a, the BioLink, which helps settle out the, the sediment. And they used sand as a bedding in their barn, so they uh, indicated when I interviewed them they used lots of sand straps. Dimension of those typically are 14 foot wide by 500 feet long. And these would be sand traps outside of the barns. But they also had uh, numerous sand traps at the end of the barns, and each one of these was 2 foot by 14 feet uh, by about 20 feet. And they then subsequently processed that sand with what's called a sand screw. And essentially what you're trying to do is pull out as clean a sand as you can for reuse for bedding again. Um, this particular operation used uh, two of these DT360 series, so these... Um, uh, cylinder type liquid solid separators, and the two of them they used had two different screen sizes. Uh, first being an eighth inch that pulls out the larger solids, and in tandem they go to the sixteenth inch that so pulls out smaller solids. And this particular operation is getting ready to install a centrifuge, is kind of a last step to clean up the wastewater a bit more before it goes to the lagoon. Um, their particular lagoons were engineered and clay lined prior to installing any liners. Um, in, uh, they did this in the year 2000, so they're about 15 years old. Uh, they used 60 mil liners. They had um, two, two 9 million gallon lagoons, um, and their approximate depth is about 20 feet. They also installed gas emission lines underneath the, the liner, and this was to prevent any gassing. Uh, particularly in lagoons that are retrofitted. You could have some organic matter in that uh, initial layer of soil and, uh, and clay. And uh, when you put a liner in on top of that, then there could be some gassing that, that, that occurs. So you put a gas emission line so that you can prevent this floating of the uh, liner after it's filled. They did not put any concrete ramps in this particular farm, case study two. 
they have not entered their lagoons, but they said if they were to build new again, they would probably put in uh, ramps. They do use a floating pump and a stinger agitator for manure movement, and their particular stinger, they run it off of a tractor power takeoff. So um, at today's cost, uh, they would have, this would cost them about $87,000. And based on their cow numbers, uh, that's the price of about $15 per cow. Case study number three, and this is the last case study I'll talk about today. Uh, again, a uh, herd that's approaching uh, 6,000 cows. They had 5,800. Uh, they use uh, manure solids as bedding. They scrape their feed alleys. Um, they also use the DT360 systems for liquid solid separation using the two different screen sizes. They use the sediment system for sludge removal and then also run um, that's uh, remaining material over DT360. And uh, the liquid after all of the separation systems uh, goes to the lagoon, uh, then to a settle, settling basin, and then to a big lagoon. So again, several more uh, holding ponds before it goes on to the, the biggest lagoon or manure pond. Um, their settling ponds have concrete ramps to the bottom, but uh, so down the slope, but they don't have concrete across the whole bottom. If there's any issues with the liners, they do that maintenance on those liners in-house rather than, than hiring a contractor to come and do it. And then the material from settling basin is pumped and injected. So that's one of the reasons that many of these farms are trying to take out so much solids is that they are trying to put these uh, manure out through different uh, sprinkler systems. So on the last line here with regard to their big lagoon, um, they pump out of that uh, in high volume but low pressure, uh, floating pumps, and it's applied to the field via pivots with low pressure nozzles. In terms of costs, in 2002, they were dealing with about 35 cents per square foot of installation. Uh, that, that particular time was about 25 million gallons or seven acres of uh, lagoon. They had two settling ponds, about 1.5 million gallon each in addition, and those were lined with uh, 40 mil poly. And uh, so for that total of 638,000 square feet, that was cost about $223,000. In 2014, uh, when they did some additional work, then they had 40 cents per square foot. So it increased about uh, 5 cents per square foot during that time of 2002-2014. Um, 28 million gallons of settling pond of uh, 500,000 gallons in addition. Total cost there was uh, about $139,000. So if you add the two of these up, um, and divide it out by the total number of cows they have, it came out to about $62 per cow. So there's been some interest uh, in recommending what's called a double liner with leak detection system in, uh, in Washington. Uh, my understanding is we don't currently have any of these systems in on ag operations. Um, but if you were to do this, and these were numbers I got from the company that does the installation, uh, you'd be looking at a HD PE um, 40 mil and then a 60 mil, and there's a the respective prices on those. Um, and then the leak detection system that's put in at the bottom, as well as the clay liner. So it comes up to about $2.55 a square foot. Um, then if we look at uh, some of those numbers and compare it to what it, would, what it would take for us in western Washington, where we still have about 60% of our herds, and look at different herd sizes. So our herds on the west side are a bit smaller, um, 500,000, maybe 2,000 cows, but mostly in the 500 to 1,000 cow range. If there was a single liner geomembrane, um, based on the case study estimates, it would be somewhere between 26,000 and about 104,000 as you go from 500 cows to 2,000 cows. If there was a requirement for double liner with a leak detection, uh, you kind of have to use a multiplier of about 6.5 to upscale that cost. And so now for a dairy that's 500 cows, we're looking at somewhere approaching $170,000 on the low end. And if you had 2,000 cows, approaching about $680,000. So a significant uh, expense to dairies to um, install these kinds of technologies, let alone the extra uh, work to what do you do with your manure while you're trying to retrofit old lagoons. So in summary for this piece, um, there is a need for increased attention to solids management if you do use uh, line manure ponds. Um, so you don't, you want to be careful not to um, 
damage those liners. While expensive, uh, single-layer liners an option when clay is not a viable option, and that was the case for several of our dairies, or when the local agency requirement dictates use of that liner for um, installation of a lagoon in a particular area due to the soil types. Um, there is an expense for use of liners, and it would be greater on a per cow basis in areas of high rainfall, uh, like we have in western Washington, if store so much more water than there would be, uh, say, in eastern Washington. So with that, I'll uh, conclude my part of the presentation.